And then, before you knew it, 10,000 people up, 3.2 k's up a hill. Yes, yeah, then we had to wait, obviously, for the dignitaries to, uh, to leave the, the venue and make their way up to uh, the next, next service, and that was uh, up at uh, Lone Pine. Up at Lone Pine, yeah. So it, it was amazing, to, I guess, to walk up through the terrain and mm. the track and, you know, again, just a, a little goat's trail up through the, the, the tea tree and, uh, you know, the, the, the terrain and, you know, it's just so, I guess... Um, well, it made it real, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, it did. Like looking it, down, you can imagine yourself, like at the bottom of it, you, you think of yourself in a, as an Anzac walking up. Standing halfway up the hill, if you think of yourself as a Turk, looking down with a big machine gun, you think, how easy is this? Yeah. It doesn't matter where they come from, I'm yeah. going to pick them off. And, uh, and so we were lucky that we, we got to, to make that walk, I think. And at this point, I think it's 7.30 in the morning, maybe, 7 That's o'clock, right. yes. 7.30 in the morning. So we've been up pretty much on and off for, for 24 hours at this point. Uh, and then we moved into the, the Lone Pine Australian service, which obviously a lot of the New Zealand uh, travellers bypassed to head up to there and get ready for their service, get the best seat. But there was still, I'd oh, say... Oh, grandstands were full. Yeah, yeah, there's still several thousand there and it, that was pretty impressive. And uh, the, the sun came out, looked like a beautiful morning, but again, just sitting there and, and uh, appreciating what, or trying to appreciate what these guys went through as the service was, was being delivered by a very eloquent MC. Uh, he, was, he was very, very good. Um, and of course, once that was done, the text messages started. Yeah, absolutely. What uh, text messages were they? Well, they were the ones from everyone at home. <laughs> That's about right. The, uh, <laughs> the big game at the MCG. The big game at the MCG, the anticipation. And, uh, you know, obviously we were on Twitter throughout the... Correct. Throughout yeah. the, at the morning. Um, and you can you see know. Jason's Twitter address on the screen there if you'd like to follow him. He's uh, getting up and about in the Twitter world, so... But, uh, we had a couple of uh, radio interviews and uh, chats back home to, to Triple M and um, to SEN well. throughout, the, throughout the morning and, you know, I just suppose, I suppose, well, hopefully they felt like they, you know, they felt like they were there in some, some, some way when we were talking to them. But, uh, yeah, look, and then it would moved in straight into the game after that, wasn't it? It was uh, old Blackie Al, um, the Collingwood supporter, and uh, Lance and Sue and... Andrew. And Andrew, who, uh, who the Mad Bombers, and, and uh, you, unfortunately, the, the Port Adelaide supporter that <laughs> was a bit shocked from the result the day before. Fancy, I'm sorry, I know this is about Essendon Footy Club, and I know it's about Sportsnet, but fancy being in Gallipoli at Lone Pine, watching the Australian Anzac Day commemorative service, turning round and walking into two Gold Coast Suns jumpers... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know they sold jumpers yet, they're that new, they're so wet behind the ears. I turn around, there's two jumpers, uh, Gold Coast, and of course I think it might have been Andrew, um, who happened to mention to them very loudly that I was a Port Adelaide, well that was it wasn't it? Uh, I copped it in a faraway country for being a Port Adelaide supporter. <laughs> Matty Primus, lately, get your act together. But um, it, was, it was exciting wasn't it? It was uh, a lot of people there knew the result, and uh, even though we did find out before we had a chance to watch the game... We knew we had an entertaining game to watch, though, didn't we? Like, right. we? When we got back to the hotel, you know, everyone was pumped about getting on the web and uh, you know, watching the game that just just taken place. I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what people were pumped about. I was having a beer, from what I, from what I can remember. <laughs> and we didn't do a lot of drinking on this trip, and that is 100% honest. It's not mm. about that. Uh, it, it's about the history, it's about the experience. But once all that's done, uh, and you realise the enormity of what you've just seen and heard and, and, and you know, listened to, when you do sit down to have a beer, you tend to have about a thousand. Yeah. And watching the game, I think you had the first shout, and uh, you set a cracking pace, and then it was on. So we did manage to watch the game uh, on, on the web, which was fantastic. You just watch it on demand, and of course that's something we'll do, uh, do every year, regardless of the result. And uh, it, was, it was very exciting. But I guess what it did do, for me, Anzac Day, and I'm only speaking for me, I'll get, get your take in a second, Jason, but for me, Anzac Day has always been Dawn Service, Young and Jackson's, for those of you not in Melbourne, it's an iconic pub where the diggers or ex-servicemen of any um, generation go to. You buy a digger a pot, uh, so you effectively done your duty, you buy your badge and you head to the game. And that is the biggest thing about Anzac Day. It kind of takes over a little bit what Anzac Day is really all about. So the perspective gained was invaluable, I think. I mean, and that's just for me. I've never been in front of the G in front of 90,000 people. You've done it six times. How do you feel about it? 
Yeah, look, I, look, I feel like very, I suppose, proud to, to, mm. to be a part, a part of the whole experience and I suppose to experience it um, in, I guess, the sense that we did this year and also, you know, being a player. But I think the game on Anzac Day is a good thing. I mm. think it, um, you know, I feel, as I said, very lucky. You know, every player wants to play in front of big crowds, wants to be tested by, you know, good opposition. Um, and, you know, what better place to, to do yourself proud and the country proud and, and the people that represented our country 100 years ago almost, um, you know, pay your respects by Absolutely. playing a great game of football, something you love doing. And I guess, you know, I felt very lucky and privileged to be able to do that for, for 10 or 12 years. So um, for me, I reckon it's a good thing. I think it, um, it, it certainly creates um, in, interest in Anzac Day as well, having the game. It's just spoken about for, for probably a good fortnight, you know, leading in and, you know, whether Anzac Day, and it should, it should regardless if there's football being played on it, but whether it get, would get spoken about and, um, you know, in the sense that all it gets, I suppose, the run it gets uh, nowadays in the media. And, you know, whether it's, you know, Jason Akamana's trying to, you know, put his two bobs in about other teams getting an opportunity, it's still, they're still mentioning Anzac Day and mm. everyone doesn't necessarily think about the game. They think about the diggers and think about why we have Anzac Day. It's not obviously the game of football. It's about, you know, I suppose, Australia's history. I think you're right. And I think it does. I mean, sport transcends a lot of things. And I think AFL in Australia transcends more than most. And, and one of those is, I was surprised by the age groups mm. that were at Gallipoli. Um, and almost every single one of them was an AFL fan. And every single one of them, or that we spoke to anyway, of course we didn't get around to all of them, but every single one of them wanted to know um, who'd won or did anyone know who's won between Collingwood and Essendon. Then we ran into uh, to Captain Kirk, Mickey O and the Australian Institute of Sport AFL kids. I mean, the fact that they were even there on the way back from their training camp, and I think it was Milan, they'd been there. The fact that they were even there just shows a mentality that hopefully means that Anzac Day is in very safe hands with our younger generations. And the fact that you guys have the chance to, to put it on the map, so to speak, I think complements whatever education the kids are getting. You yeah, know, absolutely. You're right. It's a high profile, everyone wants to be there, everyone wants to do it, and the respect that's shown on the field, as well as off the field more often than not, is, is absolute gold and perfect for Anzac Day. Yeah. I think 80% of the crowd, or 85% of the crowd, were probably you know, under 25. And, and whether that's because people are travelling, and you know, I think there's going to be an opportunity next year to do an extended travel Correct. after the trip, yep. so I think it's, it's going to be a great thing. So, um, and certainly something I'll, I'll, I'll definitely want to want to continue on with. So whether you know young people are there because obviously one they want to learn about it, they want to you know they're very patriotic when you're overseas. So to to to, to go to another country and represent your country, um, which I think you know a lot of a lot of Aussies love doing, mm. um, you know going to another country and, and wearing our colours and you know it's just what we do when we're overseas and um, yeah it's. It's very cool, it's very cool. Now, we've taken up a lot of time, we've gone a bit over time actually, so we'll wrap it up pretty quickly. I mean, after the dawn, sir, we did uh, manage to, to head back into Istanbul. We did a fantastic Bosphorus cruise uh, on, on the river there, where, as you said, Jason, the Asian side, the European side, the difference in architecture uh, is pretty startling. And I'll tell you what, you, you don't want to worry about uh, any of the, the big cities, like all the, the most expensive suburbs in Australia, like, Peppermint Grove in, in uh, WA or on the on the east coast, maybe Bellevue Hill. You want to see the price tags on the property? Go to Istanbul. It is out of control. But I'll leave that for you to see. Again, I don't want to spoil the trip. Um, and then that was it. Free morning the next morning. Bit of shopping. Um, How are we going, guys? Here we are at the Istanbul Egyptian Bazaar. Got all the spices. Plenty of teas. We've fallen in love with the teas over this trip. They've got the Turkish uh, apple tea. They've got the I love tea, which I think I might take home to the girlfriend. Um, but yeah, look, it's been a great trip. We're sort of in our last last couple of days now, and uh, you know, I talked you through the last couple of days. We've obviously had the experience of Gallipoli and, and being at Anzac Cove with about probably ten or fifteen thousand uh, Aussie New Zealand uh, travellers. That was just the most amazing experience I've ever ever you know come across, and uh, probably probably beats being out in the MCG in front of ninety thousand to be honest with you. And, you know, we went back and watched the game, disappointing to see the Bombers go down, but I thought they put in a good fight. And, um, you know, it's just been you know, a great trip with some really good people and, you know, I take a lot of friendships away from this trip. You get to come back? So, oh, mate, yeah, I'm absolutely coming back. Next year, uh, book me in again, so I'd like to see a few more, more people on board and, uh, yeah, absolutely uh, count me in for the next four years, mate.
See you later. Bought myself a shisha pipe. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah I finally got one. So uh, I haven't. <laughs> you haven't one of them for the whole. whole. I haven't used it yet, but uh, I, I really look forward to giving that a crack. I've got some apple tobacco. Oh. Yeah, so I don't know what that's going to be back. like, but uh, anyway, yeah, got it back in, so it was all good. Just didn't declare. No, I did declare it. Um, but overall, I guess an amazing trip. Our first one. Uh, you've signed on. Yeah, absolutely. For a couple more. I mean, the trip's only going to get better. We we learnt so much, I suppose, by being on that trip. You know how we can do things potentially better. Yep. Um, you know what worked, maybe what didn't work, and it's only going to build with momentum and you know I think you know building into 2015 for the 100 year anniversary it's going to it's going to be quite exciting to get on board and you know um, I guess I think for the people that went on this year they were very excited about being the first ones on this trip because I think potentially in four years time or you know even next year I think we've got 40 booked yep. um, so you know the fact that we took six away they were the first six ever to go there so and I think this is something that's going to build and it's going to grow and you know, I think the, the people that went on this trip are going to, they've certainly taken something with them. Um, in that sense, they've started something. So, um, you know, very exciting next year. I can't wait to get on it again and meet new people and meet more Essendon people. And uh, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be great. And I'll, I'll give you the tip, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know um, Jason Johnson, uh, apart from on the field and, and his heroics there, you couldn't find a, a more down to earth, and I'm sure you've got it out of this interview, and I'm sorry if I'm embarrassing you, mate, but you couldn't find a more down to earth bloke who's prepared to pretty much answer any question, but also go out of his way to make the rest of the group feel comfortable. So it's not a junket for you, is it, Josie? He actually he gets his, his fingernails dirty and gets in and, and does a bit of the hard work, which is we really appreciate it. It was a pleasure to have you along. Now, before I let you go, Jason, I know you had a big weekend planned. Uh, before I let you go, one favourite. What was your favourite thing? Question without notice, it's a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, look, um, the favourite I think, I, I really enjoyed the build up as much as I guess, you know, I look back and I talk about, I guess, the, 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 the service and I suppose, you know, you're awake for 24 hours, there's a lot of waiting around. But for me, it was actually getting there, seeing it, and just the build up throughout the evening. Um, that's probably the one, yeah, the, the, the real highlight of it. I think, you know, it, it probably, it, it certainly, I suppose, um, beats the, the actual service itself. Um, but, you know, just being there and being, uh, just to have the time to take it in. And, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of time when you travel, you, you visit places, you, you don't get enough time in a, in, a, in a place. I felt like I had enough time there, and, but you needed that time. You, you, needed, the, you needed the 12 hours or, you know, the, the, we were there for a long time, but we, 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 <laughs> we, you needed that time to actually, you know, just, just think about it and you know, um, and that for me was probably the highlight. Oh, I agree. Couldn't agree with you more. Mine was also also the lead up. There are a lot of, of little moments. Uh, our romantic glove shopping. Yeah. Uh, Alan uh, Black, oh sorry, yeah, Alan Black having to wear a skirt into the, uh, the blue mosque because he had shorts on. Um, it, it, they're all highlights to me. Crunchy Adam, the whole lot. So from Jason and myself, uh, we, Thank you for your time, thank you for watching and look forward to welcoming you. Jump on our website at any time, either the Essendon Football Club or sportsnetholidays.com. Ring the number on your screen uh, and ask for any of our staff about the 2012 trip. As Jason said, it's already got a lot of interest, about 40 people already booked. So jump on board quickly and uh, we'll keep you informed every step of the way. Thanks Jason. Thanks Abby. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too mate.